Hey guys, it's me Sulpana101 here, and today I'll be showing you the steps I take in learning a new fighter game for the upcoming EVO 2020 series. I'm not a high level player, but I hope these tips can help you improve and bring your fighting game knowledge up to the next level. This is more of a self documentary, but these tips are universal to every fighting game. Have fun, and let's get into it. Frame data is extremely important in fighting games. This frame step can be enabled by using dash debug keys and launch options. Here I use standing heavy kick. The beginning frames are called startup frames. The moment when my attack connects with my opponents and red hitboxes appear are called active frames. After this short period of time called hit stop, Philly will begin to progress through her block stun animation. This is where the battle of who is free to act first begins. Since Philly can move first, this move is considered minus on block. No matter how hard I blocked her, I can't stop myself from being punished. Skullgirls has both chains and links as primary ways of beginning offense. A chain occurs when you press two buttons within a window of each other on block stun to get what's known as a block string. A frame trap occurs when the startup of an opponent's move is caught by the active frames of your move when you are plus on block. Here, my crouching light punches plus four on block so I can act four frames before my opponent. Since my crouching light punch also has seven frames of startup, if timed correctly, her light punch will begin its startup in the three frames of freedom that she has, which is then swiftly punished. I recommend finding a few frame traps and chains with your character. This will make your offense varied and very hard to predict. These are still completely blockable by your opponent, which leads me on to my next segment. Mix-ups occur in a situation where the guard is ambiguous for your opponent. This can be through switching up lows and overheads, switching left and right sides, using command grabs or regular grabs, or a mix of all these options. Once you have learned some options off these beginner mix-ups, your offense will be less predictable and stronger than before. Characters can have many different anti-airs. By using the hitbox for your in training mode, you can find what moves cover your head with hitboxes. I recommend you find moves that cover a multitude of different jumping angles. Invincible moves are also really good as anti-airs, so experiment with your character. Push block occurs when you are in block stun. If you press two punch buttons simultaneously, you will perform a push block. It's good to know what moves are best to push block in a matchup as some moves are affected heavily by push block. Usually, push blocking towards the end of a move will cause the best outcome. Push block can also be done in the air. This advice is only for people who aren't playing solo. Pressing forward and tagging in an assist on block stun will cause an alpha counter. Depending on the assist set, you may be invulnerable, so tagging out can be a very good way of taking back your turn. A reset is defined as ending a combo in a way that leaves the opponent in some neutral state and then attempting a second combo. Resets usually involve a mix-up of some kind to keep the opponent guessing. Resets are not surefire ways of keeping up pressure, as they can be blocked or teched. However, if you mix up your options with your characters, you're sure to be a formidable opponent. I've said before that Skullgirls is a team game. You can have one, two, or three characters on your team. Any team is possible, and it's recommended that you pick the characters you enjoy and put them in any team configuration you want. Every character has two assists and a custom assist. This custom assist allows you to input any move, grab, special, or action to use as an assist. Supers are not allowed. Assists can be used in multiple ways. To recap, a light and medium button that are diagonal will bring out your first assist. A heavy and medium button that are diagonal will bring out your second assist. Both mediums will tag out to your first assist. Both heavies will tag out to your second assist. The middle slot on the health bar will always be your first assist, and the top slot is always your second assist. A team provides many benefits over playing solo. First, you get another defensive option called the Alpha Counter, explained earlier in the video. This can be a great tool for stopping any unwanted offense. Secondly, you get to use assists. These can start offense, provide cover on defense, extend combos, provide reset opportunities, and even give you more damage with DHC supers. Finally, you can recover red HP on your other characters when you tag out. 
giving you more opportunities to stay in the game. All this requires a lot more work. You need to pick your team, find what synergizes well, learn bread and butter combos with two or more characters, and be able to execute your game plan with these characters consistently. Learning one character can be a hard task, and learning multiple more than doubles the workload. Thanks for watching week 2 of my Road to Evo series. There was a lot of information in this week's episode, so I'm glad you managed to make it to the end. Next week's episode will be about utilising a basic game plan and how to learn from yourself and others. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.